Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I wanted to bring you um, two dreams that I had on May 16th. So um, the first dream was of a woman in her 40s and she was telling her mother, who was in her 60s, that she was going to a cocktail party um, for the purpose of flirting with older men so they would buy her drinks. And she was intentionally using her sexuality to solicit money from men, basically. Um, which is a, a form of prostitution or harlotry. So Proverbs 7.21 says, With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattery of her lips, she seduced him. Um, and then in Ezekiel 16.15-17, it says, But you, you did trust in your own beauty and played the harlot because of your renown and poured your fornications on everyone that passed by. And of your garments you did take, and decked your high places with diverse colors, and played the harlot thereupon. You have also taken your fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given you, and made to yourself images of men, and did commit whoredom with them. So later the same night, sorry, I just lost my document. Later the same night, I dreamt of a woman wearing a brightly colored and decorated sweatshirt with fringe on the bottom of it. And everyone was admiring her sweatshirt and asking her where she got it. I don't remember her exact answer, but I understood that she was in some way involved in the manufacturing of these sweatshirts. Someone asked her if men ordered them, at which point I thought to myself, my husband would never be caught dead wearing something so gaudy and emasculating. Well, she responded, the men who don't have one want one, and the men who do have one don't want it anymore. And then I woke up, and this dream reminded me of the emasculation of men, particularly in our society, by manipulative women, and how that has contributed to the divorce rate in America, in turn resulting in what I would consider to be the, the breakdown of the fabric of our society. So many women are out to catch themselves a rich man um, and they lure them in through seductive means and because so many men want to catch themselves a trophy wife, they fall for it. The men who don't have wives want one and the men who do have wives don't want them anymore. So it comes down to the fact that we've lost sight of what covenant marriage is all about. It's not about attaching ourselves to someone we think is going to raise our status in the eyes of others. It's about entering into a solemn agreement before Yahweh for the rest of our lives. So Mark 10, 6 through 9 says, But from the beginning of creation, Elohim made them male and female. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the actual word there in the original language is his woman which is why my husband and I support Initiative 1192 in Washington State to redefine marriage as being between one man and one woman. The rest of that verse says, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they who no more are twain, but one flesh. It says it twice. What therefore Elohim hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So covenant marriage is about love, respect, and mutual submission one to another as unto the Lord. It's not about getting all you can get from the other person. It's about giving all you can give. So, so many marriages are based upon the lie that the other person will somehow complete them. Remember that, there's that Jerry Maguire movie, complete me, or make them happy. But if you aren't giving more than you're getting in marriage, eventually you ain't going to be so happy anymore, and neither is your spouse. This whole being happily married concept is just not scriptural. So I went, to a, I went to college with a young man named Gary Thomas, who now has an international marriage ministry and is the author of several books. He wrote what I consider to be a very profound book entitled Sacred Marriage, and I'm going to put a link in the description box for you. 
Um, the subtitle of that book is, What if God designed marriage more to make us holy than to make us happy? So that book was a real eye-opener to me and helped me to view my own marriage in a whole new light. Now, everything I do for my husband, I view as an act of service to my king. I don't love my husband because he's lovable. I love him because he's my brother in Christ and deserves to be loved because I've been commanded to love my neighbor, which includes my husband, as myself. And I don't respect him because he's respectable. And a lot of women, you know, will have the attitude of, well, I'll respect him when he acts respectable. And that's just not biblical. I respect my husband because it's in the heart of every man to be respected unconditionally, just as it's in the heart of every woman to be loved unconditionally. We women, we get that whole unconditional love concept because that's how we're wired. But at least in America, we have not been raised in a culture that helps us understand that men need, their number one need is to be respected. In fact, surveys have shown that men, when they're asked the question, would you rather be unloved and all alone in the world, or would you rather be disrespected? And their answer is, overwhelmingly, I'd rather be unloved and all alone in the world. And we as women think, are you kidding me? But that's the heart of a man, is to be respected. So, scripture says that wives should respect their husbands and men should love their wives. And that's the key to a lifelong, mutually fulfilling marriage that honors Yahweh. So, and may I just add, that as a result of the fact that we Christians have not honored marriage as a holy institution ordained by Yahweh to be an earthly representation between Yeshua and his bride, the enemy has crept in and is now attempting to turn marriage into an abomination by legalizing what's being called same-sex marriage, which to me is an oxymoron. You know, and it's happening one state at a time and now our own president has come out, the first sitting president ever, to say he personally supports such an abomination. I can only say that judgment will soon follow and it will be righteous judgment. Yahweh will judge the whole earth for her harlotry and her abominations, for breaking his covenant, forsaking his Torah, and exchanging it for a lie. Ephesians 5, 24 through 33 says, Therefore, as the called out assembly is subject to Hamashiach, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the called out assembly and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious called out assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives and their own, sorry, as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as Hamashiach, the called out assembly. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, his woman, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Hamashiach and the called out assembly of the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And I looked at that word reverence in the concordance, and um, every incident instance that it's used throughout scripture and all the definitions are all about fear well we know that we're not supposed to be afraid of our husbands but it's fear is in the same way that we fear the lord out of reverence for him out of our respect for his position in our lives and i'll tell you um the the fact that my husband submits himself to the lord makes it real easy for me to submit myself to him. 
So in addition to the sacred marriage link, I'm going to put in the description box. Um, I'm also going to include a description for the Love and Respect website. Um, that was one of the other books I think that was most transformational in my marriage. Um, my husband actually read it first, and I recommend that um, that guys read this book. I mean, it's the first marriage book that he read that he you know he poured through it in a weekend and was like wow this book is written for men um whereas i think a lot of times men think marriage books are you know written more for women or you know it's because their their wives are trying to fix them in some way um so i have to admit that when i read that book it was not an easy read for me and i really had to evaluate um how i uh treated my husband and uh and what it meant to respect him and uh it's been revolutionary. It really has changed our marriage from a good marriage to a great marriage. So I highly recommend that book. So here's the shofar for you. Rukata Adonai Eluhinu Malek Ka Olam. Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen. For those of you who um, are still with me after the blowing of the shofar and the blessing, um, I have to tell you a cute, quick story. So um, my husband and I have had the opportunity to actually spend some time with the author of the Love and Respect book, Emerson Egerton, and his wife Sarah. And um, I remember one night. David asked Emerson, because um, there's this part in the book that talks about how it's in the heart of every man to lay down or die for his wife, lay down his life. And David says to Emerson, I don't understand why I have to die for her. Why can't I kill for her? <laughs> and Emerson cracked up. And I thought, oh, that's my man. So here's a, here's a, a, a picture of, of my husband as a warrior. I so appreciate, love, and respect him.